And let's look at an example here where we can start with very, very simple things. That's something I wanted to do today. Make sure we can start where most people can relate to. Is there anybody who's never played this before? And it's okay if you haven't. Or has everybody pretty much played that? Anyone know what that is? Scale. It's a scale. It's a specific kind of scale. So does anybody know what the name of that scale is? I can play it again. We'll, ask, we'll get you this Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, man. Okay. Yes. Hey. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, it's a pentatonic scale. That's still not the complete answer for me anyway. What, it's, it's, it's like, hey, what kind of pentatonic scale is it? Minor. Right on. It's a minor pentatonic, right? So, and no surprise there, fitting with the minor seventh chord, right? So, in this case, I'm in D flat. Now, <clears throat> we know if we're improvising, and I'm going to talk a lot about improvising today. I will do a, a tune at the end, so I, I uh, you know, hope it's not too much of that. But um, if we just take that, that simple scale, we know we need to be able to know that everywhere. Right? All the patterns. Right? So that's something, that's a given. We want to be able to move around. But we can also expand that scale, okay? So if you haven't learned that stuff already, that's square one. I mean, that's, that's step one, or whatever you want to call it. It's, that's the framework to so much else, those five simple notes, okay? Um, if we add one note in the octave, we get, who knows what this is. And then, of course, in the second octave. Anybody know what that is? Okay, that's a minor blues scale. It's got one note added right here. And Mr. Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, this, you'll recognize. Okay, different album, first Black Sabbath album, but that's the flat five, right? From the song, Black Sabbath, but I don't believe it's in that key either. But that's the note that's added, right? So we add one note to that pentatonic, we've got a new slightly new sound. We've got an extra You can bend to it, you know, or, or bend past it and come down to it. All kinds of stuff you can do. Now, the top two things on this page, it says E Dorian and E Aeolian. When you're getting into improvising, and getting into playing on a minor chord, which is usually what people play on there. I mean, to start with, especially. I mean, often it might be something like this. Rocking on the floor. Or maybe something like this. People Ways by Santana. Now, those both work with minor pentatonic. They both work with the minor blues scale. But guess what? If we expand it to a seven note scale, the two chord progressions would each call for a different scale. They do not share the same seven note scale. Does anybody have any answers to that? What would work with this? What scale is going to work with that? No problem. Aeolian. Hello. That that is the Aeolian mode that would work with those with those chords. Okay, if we played it in E. Right. It's the same scale as Jimmy Page played in Stairway to Heaven. I'll do the chord progression in E. Straight minor, 
right? Mm-hmm. Same, same chord progression as that. So obviously this is very, very familiar territory. It's nothing unusual. And when we say Aeolian, it sounds like such a complicated name, okay? It, you, you, you can just call it natural minor, that's fine. And we can see, if we look on this page in the key of E, now it's the second one there. It's also the scale that gives you this melody. Right? So this is not anything bizarre. This is stuff we've heard from the day we were born. And a lot of pe- times people will come to me and say, I'm trapped in the boxes, I'm in a rut. I play here, then I go to the next one, and then the next one. They're usually talking about the pentatonic scale. Now, there's a lot of ways to not be trapped in a rut with just the pentalo- pentatonic excuse me, alone. But if you then add these notes as well, man, you got all kinds of stuff to work with. If you start thinking about bending strings, as you did so well earlier, Jackson, you've got little half-step bends now that were not in the pentatonic. And here, right? So it's a great thing to learn, and you're going to have all kinds of new ideas that you can play with, right? But... What about this one I just played, this progression? Well, there's a big minor seventh chord, or just a straight minor. This is obviously a minor sound. And there's our second chord, a C major. G minor seven, C major, okay? Santana, Evil Ways. Well, guess what? It's not Aeolian. Does anybody know what this is? Might be a little obvious at this point. Anybody? This is the Dorian mode, the top scale. And who has not heard this type of lick before? Anybody? Maybe with a little bit. We've all heard it. It's it's probably, probably one of the most common sounds in blues. sound. So again, this is not uncommon. And why am I talking about this so much and emphasizing this? If you have a desire to improvise on the guitar, if you want to play guitar solos, which I certainly did, and thank you, John, for giving me the vehicle to write my first solo. It's where I started learning how to put together, it, it was a major one though, it was, a, uh, it was a, a major progression, major pentatonic that I started, but it, that's, it. but but yeah, you gotta start somewhere, and and if, if you wanna play solos, I had a big desire, a great desire to, to be able to be the guy playing those melodies that I'd see the guitar players do. Way too shy I was to sing. So that was one way to get my voice out there and, and not just play the song, all the chords, right? If you have that desire, you must, must figure out the difference between those two minor sounds. Once you've got your pentatonic happening, and that's a beautiful thing because, again, I will say that the minor pentatonic fits with both of those sounds. It's the skeleton. It is the framework for both of them. If you look at these patterns, you can see, if you know the minor pentatonic, you can see it clearly inside both of those patterns. It's in there, okay? And all we've done is we've added two notes. Okay, let's go back to E, right? Here we are with this. E minor pentatonic, we're adding one note here. We'll do Dorian first. And that's the same note that gets added in Aeolian, right? second note that gets added in Dorian. There's our scale. The only difference is the Aeolian, the sixth note, is one half step lower. Sounds a little sadder to me. Kind of cries a little, you know. 
that flat sit. Very sad. So, um, this is a really, really important thing, okay? And the last thing I want to do before I play a second is emphasize if it's important to really be able to differentiate between those two kinds of minor sounds because when you're playing on chords, <laughs> you know, you want to know the notes that fit with the chords. And there's a whole bunch more I could talk about that, which I won't, because we only have so much time. But not only do you want to be able to differentiate between those, how important is it to learn the pentatonic scale and get that wired if it's the framework for both of them? Right? Super important. Never, ever skip that humble pentatonic scale. Make sure you are, have complete freedom with that. Now, I've got a chord progression here. I can't remember the, the tune, the name of the tune. It's uh, something on YouTube I, I heard Larry Carlton and Robin Ford playing. And uh, it's really nice because you can stay very, very simple and bluesy and play pentatonic. And yet it also um, allows you to try a lot of different things. The Dorian mode for one, the blues scale for another, and then some other outside sounds that you might not normally play. So here is an example again of something that can be very simple and yet you can kind of take it and keep taking it and keep expanding upon it forever. You never have to stop working on finding new harmonic devices to play on this. Thank you. 